brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. Tesla unveiled the Tesla Semi all the way back in 2017. The unveil event ended up a little overshadowed by the surprise unveil of the Tesla Roadster, but in the long run, the Semi is a much bigger deal for Tesla. Today, we're going to do a deep dive into the Tesla Semi, what makes it exciting, and how it's actually going to save everybody money. So let's get into it. To start off with, let's talk about the Tesla Semi itself. First off, it's fully electric, as you would expect, so there is no filling up with gas or diesel in the case of semi trucks. When Tesla announced the Semi, they started by talking about performance to really emphasize just how different this truck is. Performance in electric cars is fantastic, and particularly in Teslas. Even with an incredibly heavy load in the Semi, it performs really well. To start with, the zero to 60 in the semi without a trailer is five seconds. Unbelievably fast for a vehicle its size, and it will beat out the standard range Model 3. When towing 80,000 pounds, which is the max weight allowed on US highways, the Tesla semi will do a zero to 60 in 20 seconds, which is far better than what is normal for a semi truck. At a 5% grade going up, diesel trucks usually max out at 45 miles per hour, according to Tesla, but the semi carrying 80,000 pounds will max out at 65 miles per hour. Although the website now quotes 60 miles per hour instead of 65 miles per hour from the announcement event. For range, the semi is promising 500 miles at highway speeds with maximum weight getting less than two kilowatt hours per mile in efficiency. For charging, Tesla says you can charge up to 400 miles of range in as little as 30 minutes. Comparing that to a normal diesel truck, it typically takes around 15 minutes to fill up with diesel. Tesla's plan is to build up mega chargers similar to superchargers. Since the semi has not come yet, we have not seen any mega chargers, although we have seen the semi doing prototype testing utilizing a device to take power from multiple superchargers and combining them to charge at seemingly double the speed. For safety, the Tesla semi adds some great safety features to a normal semi thanks to the fact that it is made by Tesla. First, it will include autopilot for lane keeping, emergency braking, and forward collision warning. This will utilize Tesla's existing autopilot system and will absolutely absolutely take a lot of stress off of the typical trucker's drive when needed. The position of the driver is in the safest position. It has the lowest possible center of gravity thanks to the large battery pack, minimal rollover risk, again thanks to that battery pack, and jackknifing protection. With four independent motors on the Tesla Semi, Elon Musk said that the system will automatically keep this from happening and make it impossible in the Tesla Semi. Lastly, according to Elon Musk, semi trucks typically deal with windshields breaking at least once a year. When it breaks, they are not allowed to drive, so the Tesla Semi will include Tesla's armor glass, which he said is, quote, thermonuclear explosion proof glass. This is the same glass that Tesla will be using on the upcoming Cybertruck, and it will prevent the glass from breaking, well, hopefully. One of the main draws for electric cars in general is reliability and lack of maintenance. So Tesla is guaranteeing that their semi will not break down for 1 million miles. The brake pads basically last forever, according to them, and the truck itself will do predictive maintenance to let you know in advance of things you may need to repair. It will also include the Tesla app with access to mobile service and more. For price, the base price of the 300 mile range semi is $150,000 and $180,000 for the 500 mile range version. According to Tesla, this enables over $200,000 worth of fuel savings since the cost of ownership for the Tesla Semi will be 20% cheaper than an equivalent diesel Semi per mile at $1.26 per mile. This is because Tesla is guaranteeing a seven cent per kilowatt hour price for charging at their mega chargers when those get built out. At the announcement event, Elon Musk further talked about their convoy technology. This would allow multiple semis to travel together in a convoy, and they are confident that they can do this 10 times safer than a human, and it makes it even cheaper than diesel. This would bring the cost of a Tesla semi down to 85 cents per mile, beating diesel by a long shot, and also beating out the cost of rail. This is where it gets very interesting and exciting. Nearly everything you buy is shipped in a number of ways, with big companies like Amazon relying on large semi trucks to haul prime shipments. When the shipment goes from the warehouse to your house, Amazon is starting to shift to Rivian electric delivery vehicles, which surely will bring their own cost savings, but they are still using standard diesel trucking before that point, getting shipments to warehouses. Amazon's current main business model includes a subscription fee for Prime, along with free included two-day shipping. You pay that subscription fee for that perk, and Amazon deals with all of the costs associated with the entire pipeline of shipping. For other retailers, this is often handled by other companies, but Amazon has expanded to the point of creating their own system from point A to point B. 
Let's say that a diesel truck truly costs $1.51 as Elon talked about at the Tesla Semi announcement event. Even if they can only achieve the cost savings of $1.26 per mile, this will save any company, as well as Amazon, about 25 cents per mile. And those cost savings add up quick with thousands of truck drivers driving thousands of miles each day. For some quick math to illustrate this, that's $250 saved every 1,000 miles driven. Now, if Tesla can achieve their convoy cost of 85 cents per mile compared with a diesel truck at $1.51 per mile, that will save 66 cents per mile or $660 every 1,000 miles driven. With an average of 45,000 miles driven by average semis each year and 20,000 semi trailers in Amazon's personal fleet, that's around $594 million saved each year by switching to Tesla semi convoys, and that's just Amazon. Now, of course, keep in mind that these are based on Tesla's estimates. At the announcement event, Elon said the phrase, we're confident that, a lot. So this obviously isn't 100% proven out, but if these innovations truly come to be, which seems possible from Tesla, it will be a gigantic game changer. Additionally, my math is incredibly rough and just illustrates exactly how much these numbers add up. Those numbers I'm citing are correct for Amazon's fleet size and the average miles driven by semis each year, but there will be other cost factors involved with drivers driving Amazon's own trailers for less time, charging time, and more. However, as we frequently see with electric cars, maintenance will likely be much cheaper in these semis. In the best case scenario, Tesla hits those numbers, saves Amazon $594 million per year, and saves even more with lack of maintenance. So what does this mean for the consumer? Well, first it would obviously mean more profits for Amazon. However, I only used Amazon as an example. Any company would be able to unlock these same savings by buying Tesla semis, which means a cheaper cost of goods for everyone on nearly everything shipped this way. Since free shipping is becoming standard place in most large retailers, the cost simply gets added back into the subscription fees and the price of the products you buy. With those shipping costs themselves lowered thanks to the Tesla Semi, all companies would be able to lower their prices, and they would because that's how competition works. We've seen all sorts of Amazon Prime competitors popping up from Target, Walmart, and more, so savings on shipping would ultimately make their way down to the consumer. It looks like the Tesla Semi would save companies money, and it would, but at the end of the day, the Tesla Semi would save you money. Real quick, I'd like to give a shout out to today's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform built to help you build a professional website, online store, or portfolio to match your style and bring your ideas to life with ease. All Squarespace websites are automatically optimized for mobile, tablet, and desktop, so your website looks professional everywhere and is very intuitive. Connect with your audience and generate revenue through members-only gated content, manage your members, and send email communications all with the same platform. In my experience, Squarespace is by far the easiest way to create a professional website. Check out squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Ryan Shaw to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. If these numbers are correct, and if Tesla builds out a robust charging solution for all of these trucks that they sell, the demand will be absolutely insane for them. This would actually cause a number of issues for Tesla in the coming years. No large transition like this happens quickly, and the full transition from diesel trucks to electric trucks would surely take a few decades. But the semi has already been delayed because of battery supply. Elon Musk has talked about this multiple times. Not only did the semi need their new 4680 battery cells to achieve its promised ranges, it also needed those cells to be produced in order to have enough cells. Currently, they are growing their consumer vehicle business and delivered half a million vehicles in 2020 alone. As they continue to grow, the supply of batteries will need to grow with them, and the semi uses a lot of batteries. According to Elon Musk in a recent interview, it will be at least a 500 kilowatt hour battery pack. That's nearly seven times as large as the battery pack in the popular long-range Tesla Model Y. So that's seven times as many battery cells. Tesla is currently using third-party battery suppliers and detailed their plans to additionally make their own battery production facilities in the coming years. They already have their pilot plant at Fremont, will be making one at Giga Berlin and Giga Texas, and will likely need to make more at other locations as well. That will be what Tesla needs to do for their own supply, but other manufacturers are going electric as well. Essentially, as more and more companies make more and more EVs, battery cells are going to be in even more demand, making the semi a tough vehicle for Tesla to make unless cells are readily available. I imagine that once this launches and Tesla builds the infrastructure to make them usable on normal routes, demand will accelerate and there may end up being delays because of battery production. The last we've heard from Elon himself, he said, quote, if we were to make the semi like right now, which we could easily go into production with the semi, but we would not have enough cells. We would have to supply cells ourselves for semi when we are producing the 4680 in volume. 
But for example, semi would use typically five times the number of cells that a car would use, but it would not sell for five times what a car would sell for. So it would not make sense for us to do the semi right now, but it will absolutely make sense for us to do it as soon as we can address the cell production constraint. In any case, at the announcement event in 2017, Elon said order today and you'll get this truck in two years. Well, it is about three and a half years later and still no truck. So we know that they need the 4680 cells, but why would it be made now if they only have a pilot line at free Fremont. Even though Tesla has talked about the semi coming to production many different times, promising it in 2019, 2020, and now 2021, this time there are signs showing why they are getting serious. First, there have been an increasing number of Tesla semis spotted in the wild this year. You can tell that these are the latest versions of the semi because the handles have changed. Previously, they were Model 3 handles on the original semi prototype. Now they have changed to be much more practical handles to open the doors outward. Another was spotted in February in California with the updated handles and likely 46 80 cells as well. In early March, drone footage spotted the Tesla Semi doing testing and filming for Tesla. It looks like Tesla had a Model Y outfitted as a camera car, so they were doing some promotional footage, which definitely signals a shift to getting serious about this vehicle. A few days after that, Tesla posted this footage of the Semi testing on the test track. This was likely taken at the same shoot, but taken probably on a cell phone, and clearly not the Model Y camera car. So that footage is still likely to come. It's also pretty cool to hear what the Semi sounds like when it drives by at full speed. Most recently, the Kilowatt spotted the Tesla Semi testing around Fremont. They got some footage of it driving, as well as a photo of engineers looking around the vehicle as well. So those are the most recent photos of the Semi, showing that it is ramping up even more than Tesla has done in the past. But recently, Tesla also gave one of their top executives a new position. According to an SEC filing, quote, effective March 11th, 2021, Jerome Gillian, President Automotive of Tesla Inc., Tesla, transitioned to the role of President Tesla Heavy Trucking. So Tesla has an official division called Tesla Heavy Trucking, specifically for the semi, and they have put one of their top executives in charge effective earlier this month. Again, another signal that they are getting serious this time around. Additionally, the last official word from Tesla was at their Q4 earnings call when they said that they plan to deliver their first Tesla Semi by the end of the year. Through one of the first older holders for the Semi, we also heard that Tesla is planning to deliver by the end of this year. Pepsi reserved 100 Tesla Semis back in 2017 after it was announced and just issued an update on their electric vehicle project saying, quote, to date, the equipment and infrastructure in place at the site includes nearly 60 tractors, box trucks, yard trucks or forklifts powered by electric lithium ion technologies or natural gas with renewable attributes with the remaining 15 electric tractors expected to deploy later this year. They followed that up to specifically say, quote, 15 Tesla semis are expected to be added to the fleet by the end of 2021. This is a classic case of lack of communication from Tesla, but hearing this through Pepsi and the number they provided seems likely. If Pepsi had said they expect their entire order of 100 semis fulfilled this year, maybe we would question it, but 15 absolutely seems reasonable. If Tesla's 4680 cell plant has been operating since battery day, they could easily have made enough cells to make 15 Tesla semis for Pepsi once they validate them through testing. The semi was announced with a 300 mile version and a 500 mile version, as I mentioned earlier. Elon said it would be a 500 kilowatt hour battery pack. We haven't heard much, but according to a driver using the semi, the semi was quote, meeting or exceeding the range estimates. This was the older prototype utilizing older cells. And last we heard from Elon himself, he expects them to be able to achieve 1000 kilometers long term. Quote, getting a range of let's say 500 kilometers is I think quite easy, trivial to be frank for a semi truck. And this is assuming a truck that is pulling a load of 40 metric tons. If you want for long range trucking, you can take the range up to, we think easily 800 kilometers. And we see a path over time to 1000 kilometers range for a heavy duty truck. That 1000 kilometers translates to about 621 miles of range and would well exceed the 500 mile promised range of the Tesla Semi. I wouldn't expect that at launch based on how Elon worded this, but anything is possible if these new battery cells are truly as good as Tesla has promised. As I've mentioned throughout this video, there are lots of ifs when it comes to the Tesla Semi. It seems like it will actually be launching by the end of the year and that they will deliver 15 for Pepsi for use. At first, they will probably deliver small numbers to companies who have their own charging solutions, like it seems Pepsi does. But soon they will need to begin building out mega charger infrastructure in order for these trucks to operate properly. 
Autopilot and a Tesla Semi Convoy seems like a very real possibility, but Tesla didn't entirely explain why it comes down to such a cheap price with three semis as opposed to just one. If any part of that equation involved no driver, which we know Elon likes to talk about, we also know that that technology is not here yet and won't be on that level for a long time. Either way, the Tesla Semi is going to launch this year. All signs are pointing to it exceeding its announced range, and it should bring a lot of great features and incredible cost savings to the truck industry as a whole. In turn, this will make everything you buy just that much cheaper, thanks to lowered shipping costs. The potential is huge, and the demand for battery cells will skyrocket. Tesla is focused on their consumer cars for the moment, but when the Semi is finally able to launch, I think it will be a much bigger deal than most realize, not to mention the reduced pollution and noise caused by these vehicles. In the meantime, if you want to check out the most recent leaks regarding the refreshed Tesla Model S, you can check out that video linked over here or in the description below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.